Here's a procedure that you can use for making a quick and easy topographical site plan of a rhino model. So I'm going to be doing this at full scale at first. This is my site. It is 62 feet by 62 feet. And if I want to show this as having a topo line at every one foot of elevation change, then I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to use the command contour. I'm going to select a base point and a direction that's perpendicular to my contour planes, which in this case is going to be this side. Distance between contours is going to be one foot because I'm showing it a line at every one foot of elevation change. Cool. So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to move it over here, and I could just export this straight to AI, but I'm going to take it one step further because you can see that these curves, there's a lot of overlap over here on this side. So if I just do something here, you can see these are still 3D curves. Illustrator might be a little bit happier if I do a make 2D. Here are my settings. I don't have any of the background stuff turned on. Apply. That'll dump it on the top viewport. I'm going to slide it right over here. And now you can see the difference here is that these lines don't continue all the way around it. So Illustrator might be happier with that. Now it might not make a difference, but if you have trouble managing your line work in Illustrator, then doing this as a 2D export or then doing this as a make 2D might be helpful. Either way, I can click this, I can say File, Export Selected, and let's call this, let's put this in the right folder. Doo -doo -doo. There we go, and we're going to export it as an AI file, and we're going to call this topo map. So you can either go ahead and export it at full scale, but that's going to make a giant AI file because AI is going to try to open this and it's going to think it's you know, 62 feet by 62 feet. So I, you can either scale it here, you could have scaled it in advance uh, by simply scaling this line work. You could say one foot equals point to five, in, to five inches here, or you can just do a snapshot of the current view, which will just simply just grab whatever is on your screen and you can adjust it in AI. I'm going to do it this way and see how that goes. Export. Then I'm going to open AI. I'm going to open my file. And I've got nothing here. And this is because sometimes when I export from Rhino, it's going to, pres it's, or actually always when I export from Rhino, um, sometimes if you do a snapshot from the current view, it might be different. I can't really remember. But it's, it's preserved my origin information, right? So my model, my line work is somewhere way out in space. So I can hold down my um, option scroll wheel here and zoom out until I find it. And if I can't find it, what I can do is just do Control A and open my properties tab. And what I'm going to do is sometimes this might be a really extreme number that's not even on your pasteboard, so you can't even see it. First thing to do is just change this to zero, zero. Now what's cool here is that you'll notice here with my width and height values, 15 and a half inches by 15 and a half inches is my 62 feet by 62 feet at a quarter inch model scale. So that worked perfectly. What I could do if it didn't, or if it came in on the wrong size, I could change my width and height here to the, right, to the right size at scale. So if I knew what the um, end size of this drawing should be, could be, I could just scale it here. All right, now my artboard is too small, that's okay. I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to open my artboards, and I'm just going to tell it to fit it to the artwork bounds, and say okay. I could have also made it bigger, and that would have been fine too. I've got some stuff that's hanging off on the side of the screen because I was using a second monitor before. Okay, so what I can do now, and actually this is going to be a little bit easier if I change my artboard one more time to be slightly bigger. Let's just do 20 by 20. Cool. This is looking pretty nice, but I think we can make it look even better. So one thing that we might want to do 
is, is I might want to make this border a little bit thicker, which is going to be a little bit harder to select. So maybe I'll just draw a new border, right? I'll open my rectangle tool. I have no fill and a black stroke. I'm going to turn my Select this here. Sorry, I got a drag. And I'm doing a little too much. I'm just gonna take this guy, snap it down there. Okay, that's a nice frame. Maybe what I want to do is give that put that on its own layer so it's a little bit easier to manage. Let's just move that up here. So that's on its own layer. So I can turn this off easily, select this guy, and if I want to bump up the line weight a little bit, maybe a two, that looks pretty nice. Sure, okay. So then maybe what I want to do is take each of these lines, and maybe like every five feet of elevation, I want to make that line thicker. So uh, this is, you know, this base, let's just say that's zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then maybe that line I'll change to a two point or maybe a three point. Give a little bit more definition there, in which case I might want to do the frame three also. There we go. So it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this will make it easier to, to, to you know discern between elevation changes like this. Now, what's really important is to keep track of which topo line is what. So I actually did this incorrectly because my, my lowest elevation is at the bottom. So what I should have done is work my way from the bottom to the top and do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which coincidentally it puts me in the exact same spot. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so I don't have it on that one. And again, every fifth layer of elevation, not every fifth line, but every fifth foot of elevation, you would put a black line. And so bam, I've got this. Sorry for the jump, but I had to take care of some stuff. All right, so notice what I've done is I've gone through and applied that same logic where every, uh, every five feet of elevation change, I've thickened the line. That makes it easier to keep track of my elevation change because I can easily count in multiples of five. I've also taken the step of labeling those lines now notice I've tried to use a very delicate touch. I've used a pretty small font that's still visible. It's not a goofy font. It's not a uh, system defaulty looking font. It's just a nice well-designed font like Helvetica or Avenir, or if you want something with a little more style, then Rift is also good. Futuro works well too. My point is that none of these are goofy fonts and none of them look like I didn't put any effort into it. They just are nice looking fonts. Then I can just pop a scale on there and be done with it. Or I could try a couple of other different things. Like maybe instead of being black and white, these are all a very nice gray. So I can do that by simply selecting all this stuff and changing the, actually what I wanna do is I have my text on a separate layer down here, see? So maybe what I wanna do is go ahead and lock this for now. Select everything but the text and change my stroke color to kind of a light gray color. And that looks pretty nice too. In this case, maybe I wanna change this border and keep it black. Nice. Though I can see now that I accidentally left my text on this layer, and maybe I want that to be black. And that might make it pop just a little bit more. So I'm going to take these down, move them to this locked layer, which I have to unlock first. And then, with that layer selected, I can do a select all, just with these locked, control A, that stuff selected and maybe I want to change that stroke color to no stroke and leave the fill on those just black. And that might make them stand out just a little bit more. Or here's an idea. Maybe I want to take this, give it a gray fill, then move it to the bottom 
then lock it, then unlock all my line work and my text also probably. Actually, let's leave the text locked and I'll explain why in a second. Select all that line work, change the stroke to white. I think that looks good. Let's do the same with the text, except for the text, we're not going to change the stroke. We're going to change the fill. So we're going to leave it with no stroke, change the fill to white. And that looks pretty good too. It doesn't stand out that well. So maybe what I can do is select all the text and change that to a bold. That works better. Now I do have this situation where I'm running over my frame here. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer, move it to the top of the stack. Then I'm going to see if I can grab that. It's locked, unlock that square, copy it, paste it, move it up to the top layer, drag it in place, change that fill to no fill and leave the frame as black. And I think that looks pretty nice also. Or maybe I'll just make this frame white. If I do that, I'm going to need to make the stroke a little bigger to cover up that stuff below it that's peeking out. There we go. Or, hey, let's try a cool experiment. Let's take this, change the fill color to black. That's pretty cool. But hey, let's try an experiment. Let's lock everything except for the line work and make a new layer. And let's move it above that line work and select the line work layer. Control A, which selects everything on there. And control copy, control paste. Oh, actually, let's try something else. Let's do edit and then paste in front which is going to paste it at the front of that layer in the exact same spot. And then with that stuff selected, which it already is, move it to layer five. Actually, what we want to do is put layer five below this. And then, all right, so now we've got all this line work in exactly the same place. So with layer five selected and below layer four, let's do a control A and let's change the stroke to something giant like I don't know let's just go to 80 or 20 no let's do more 60 and let's change the transparency for the opacity way low let's see how that looks that's kind of cool but I think this needs to be way bigger like 500 points now we're cooking and the opacity needs to be like two. No, maybe more, maybe five. That's kind of neat too. I don't know if it really tells us anything, but it might be something worth experimenting with. 